Sony just leaked the next war bond. Yeah, well done, Sony. Again. So grab some liberty. Yes, some lovely jubbly liberty. And let's dive right into the video. See what I did there. Dive. Dive. To start things off, we're going to be looking at a new leak. This includes a mansion and some NPC models. This is over on the Helldivers 2 Leaks Discord. This has no one to credit for, but as you can see, it looks like a mansion, some sort of mansion. First impressions, it looks like a very early model. There also seems to be some sort of Washington monument there as well. No indication of what this may be, but it could be a mission or maybe a new structure. No one knows at this point. What do you think it may be? Maybe you entered a battle station, it's like some sort of hub and there's different NPCs you can talk to. That's just my speculation at the moment. The next model is supposedly a president model. So all of these are definitely early models as you can see right here. We have seen various different NPCs crop up into the game recently. The scientist NPC, which we covered in a previous video, among many others. So these could be part of our ship upgrades maybe, or even something to do with Super Earth. It would be really cool to have some sort of community hub in the game. Me personally, I think it may be related to the battle station because obviously we completed the major order to acquire the blueprints. And obviously if they're in the works and they're early models, they're probably related to something on those lines. Moving on to the bad news. Helldivers 2 has seen a dramatic decline in its player base. Even though there are many of us who still play, it seems a lot of players are still falling off quite dramatically. Let me just say this, I play this game a lot and I'm just informing you guys. So, you know, I'm not one of those haters who just come and go for views. You know, that lovely jubbly views. I believe in this game 100%. Now looking at the Steam charts, you can see a lot of players have dropped off quite a bit. This is not including PlayStation, this is just Steam. Now the main reason for this is probably the progression system and content. If you have nothing to strive for, you'll get bored and stop playing. Now this is a live service game and when content is slower and there's also not enough to keep you playing, that's when people tend to fall off. Because literally once you've gone through everything, and I mean everything, the war bonds, max resources, what is there left to work towards? Now that's why I did think monthly war bonds were a great idea initially. And the reason I say initially is because of course they were not really that great. Compared to the newer war bonds, which actually have some thought put into it. But either way, this doesn't help because we won't most likely see a war bond this month. You're probably thinking, you're so much chill compared to normal, you're normally really crazy. But um, yeah, it's probably because my ADHD has not kicked in yet. The community manager answered this question by a member that asked, at Yuri, next war bond when? Then B vitamin, B vitamin, however you wanna say it, then said this to him, no date has been announced yet. Now apparently there is a skeleton crew working at the moment at Arrowhead, a small team basically, but we won't see the full team back on until later July, August time, which is kind of scary when you think about it regarding the player count dropping, you know. But regardless, a lot has improved. They have fixed a lot of the glitches and bugs, so I'll give credit to them for that at least. Blocked regions, yes, yeah, sensitive topic, but blocked regions, of course, is another huge issue, so that's going to have an even bigger impact on the player base going forward. And we still haven't yet had any news on when players from those regions can play a game. Even though I love this game to bits, the game is in a bit of a mess at the moment. It, it can't read, you can't ignore that. Regarding Xbox, yes, there has been talks about big updates by Arrowhead, and this had many speculations. Could it be the Illuminate, new missions, or maybe Xbox getting the game? Now, personally, I think this would bring a huge number of players, and actually, I think it's a good thing. I'm not one for division, not allowing people not to have access to a game anyway. And if anything, it will bring more players to the game and ultimately grow the community even more. <sighs> Cannot forget that liberty. You cannot forget that liberty. Helldivers 2 needs to hit Xbox for managed democracy. Don't you agree? I think so, personally. With the current player situation, so I think this would be a good thing. If you head over to Google, you know, good old Google, type in Xbox News, scroll to Xbox Wire. Now, we will change the URL to tag slash Helldivers-2. And when you press enter, we see a blank page, which you may say it's nothing, but if you're typing something else into the URL, like a different title, for example, God of War, it says this page cannot be found, which personally I think is a great idea getting more players onto the game. You think if Xbox had this game, it would spark the numbers playing dramatically. Yes, obviously over time, if content again is slowly put out 
and there's obviously loads of performance issues, then you're gonna obviously see a decline either way, but it will obviously boost the players even more, and you may see a number of like, what, 50,000 odd players being added to the game who play consistently. So the question was, is Helldivers 2 coming to Xbox? And basically someone debunked this and this is what the post said. For those who want more details, Helldivers 2 tag was created on February 22nd, 2024. So yeah, this has now been debunked and is not true, which is quite unfortunate because I would love to see this game grow and be on all platforms. They most likely added the tag on their site basically just to generate more traffic. I just want to mention really quickly, the review bond cape still has yet to be released as well. So yeah, Arrowhead, when is that coming? Okay, when is that coming? Because we haven't seen it yet and you know, where is it? Moving on to the next leaked war bond. Yes, this is kind of funny because we can't really expect anything less since every time Sony sends an email, does something, anything, there is always some sort of leak that happens if it's your, you know, personal information or something related to a game. So yes, the next war bond is what we are talking about because that's what has been leaked. And it seems the files that leaked recently for the next war bond, Freedom's Flame, is supposedly, right, supposedly the war bond that's going to be coming next. This reads, Viper Commandos, dial up the temperature to cremate our enemies of justice, Helldivers. The Freedom's Flame Premium War Bond is deploying to your destroyer's acquisitions panel. Includes fiery weapons, life saving armor, cool capes, fresh emotes, player cards, and patterns. I interrupt this video to say if you enjoy the content held over, be sure to smash the subscribe button for managed democracy. No, not managed communism. Go away, Vlad. No one wants you here, Vlad. Go away. Yeah, go away. This is for um, democracy. Uh, no, no, not, not communism. Okay, not communism. So it does seem what we spoke about in a previous video on the channel regarding the leaks files for the next war bond. If this is right, I cannot wait to burn some bugs for managed democracy while drinking my liberty. Asunder is the leaker for this information and I did cover it in a previous video. I will quickly go over some of it. Freedom's flame or unknown armor 102 dragonaut these two are likely a pair salamander heat seeker firefighter primary sg451 secondary p72 primary stratagem or secondary flam-66 possible titles fire safety officer torture unknown cape weapon nicknames or player card cookout torture crisper if you want to check out the rest of this leak information you can check out this video right here i'll go over literally everything in detail because there was a lot more information that we went over and i'm not going to go over it again in this video moving on to the polls yes manage democracy over on the held Arvis 2 official discord they often use polls for engagement but they also take away this information to use on ways they can improve the game for example there was one that asked would you like to be able to stim while at full health to replenish your stamina so a member asked if these polls are what the devs use to help improve the game and then b vitamin vitamin whatever flows your boat replied saying this it depends on the feedback we get and the question we ask Knowing how the players feel about parts of the game is important. It doesn't mean we ask specifically so we can buff orbitals as soon as possible, so it's 50-50. The devs' plates are full enough already at the moment. Of course, any changes that are planned that come out as a result of a poll feedback, I couldn't reveal anyway. I'm afraid you'll just have to speculate at the moment, but don't overthink it. A poll is still just a poll and isn't not the entire metric for feedback. Then they went on to respond to a different member saying that this. Polls are used as a small part of the metric for how players are feeling about certain things. Some things are just for fun, some things are to seek feedback, maybe some of it can even be things the developers specifically wanted to ask about. And sometimes it can be just to drive conversation. This poll was mainly to drive conversation, but in the process we still got feedback of players enjoying orbitals a lot more than they did pre-patch. But still feel like the Eagles are the better choice. And players would like to see orbitals change in the following ways, and gave a bunch of cool ideas. What he's talking about right there is the poll right here regarding the orbitals and eagle strikes. Which are better, eagles or orbitals? Personally, I prefer the eagles. I don't mind the orbitals. I use the orbitals more, obviously, on the bug side because of there's a lot more, obviously, small enemies. But obviously, eagles are just so effective against your automatons when you've got a lot of hulks and, you know, large enemies just coming at you left, right, and center. What do you prefer, eagles, orbitals? Have out in the comments and let's see which one wins. Community comments. Yes, the latest comments on the video 
videos. So stick around because I may have replied to one of you. And who doesn't want to have a conversation with a just a wacky crazy guy like me? Like me. At Logan997 underscore says, Petition for a night biome make fair use of the flashlight on the guns. I actually reckon a night biome would be sick. Not only for obviously the illumination flare, that new supposedly strategy mission, but at the same time, yes, it would make use of the flashlight. And sometimes they're, I think they're kind of useless. They don't really have really any reason, I guess, to be in the game because most of the planets, I say biomes, are bright anyway. So um, you, don't, you don't really see the flashlight in use very often. Occasionally, it gets dark but not very often. At left trier underscore says, yes, please, no rainbow stuff in my game, please. None of us want that in our game, you know, that political crap nonsense, whatever you want to call it. We just want to play Helldivers, and the reason we play Helldivers is mainly, you know, Helldivers, Helldivers. We don't have any of that in the game at the moment. Even though there's been a lot of talks on Discord regarding this topic, and that obviously they do lean more towards actually being okay with having it in the game they haven't done it yet so at the moment i'm not really bothered you know as long as they don't include it in the game they keep it for basically what it is then you know i don't mind but yes i do not want that in my game either i, I don't want that i don't want it to become another call of duty another apex I like Helldivers for Helldivers. For Stroni7821 says, Great update to video, bro. Bro, 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 bro. Yes, yes, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you for Stroni. I've seen you quite a lot on the videos. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. At Xilly Gaming says, If they would have won the technical innovation, I would have wondered how, when you are using a no longer supported engine that makes some CPUs wonky laugh out loud. That is kind of funny and ironic if they did actually win that. So I do agree with you there because even though I have a 4070 and a Ryzen 5 7800X, obviously the game is somewhat, I guess, optimized to an extent, but it still has problems, especially for whatever reason, my CPU is just not being utilized on like uh, Impossible and Helldive. So um, yeah, that would be really ironic if they actually won that. Blacklisted756 says, I typically only use the mech if I was going through a lot of bases in a row, have certain objectives, or I'm trying to hold down my position in a large area. The mechs are rather slow, have limited ammo and HP with no healing or restocking. So it wouldn't be really optimal or efficient for me to be in one the entire mission and drag my team down because I'm either too slow, run out of ammo, or my mech just explodes. Just like some stratagems, there is time and a place for it. I completely agree. I mean, I don't really use them very often now. Maybe occasionally on the fabricated missions where you've got to take down the fabricators for the automatons. This was a more casual video than normal, guys, but I wanted to go over all the details properly. For everyone who made it up until now, I'm so thankful for your time. You are awesome. If you enjoyed the video, guys, be sure to subscribe and I will make more videos like this for managed democracy. And I will see you in another video at some point across YouTube. I'll finish my liberty just in time. L literally just in time. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding.